stop. I won't let you pass here. Um, I'm looking for somebody. So can't you let me through? No, I don't know you. You're a stranger. I don't trust you. Ugh, what a brat. She won't listen to anything we say. You don't trust me? What can I do to win you over? Hmm... I know. Will you bring me the star? Huh? A star? I think she's talking about the one on the Christmas tree down at the station mall. So you want me to bring you that star? Yes. Okay then. Wait right here. Guess what? There's a shortcut to the station mall by taking the roof stairwell. Pretty convenient, huh? And, uh, uh, do you promise to take her in sickness and in health? Uh, how's the next part go? Oh, come on already. Do it right, Dad. Cut me some slack. I'm not even a priest. I've never done this before. Huh, it's no use. Let's start over from the top. Don't worry about it. How about we make it simpler? This is our ceremony. We'll do it the way we want it. Yeah, she's got a point. Ready, Dad? I promise to love her for the rest of my life. And I promise the same. Uh, all right then, in that case... I can kiss the bride, remember? I was going to say that. <laughs> her smile was so sweet. I found myself grinning back. I never realized how easy smiling could be. The happiness I'm feeling this very moment makes all of tomorrow's fears trivial in comparison. Whatever happens in the future, I'll always have this moment. All I want to do now, from the bottom of my heart, is share this happiness with my son and new daughter. Even if the inevitable end is not that far off. Thanks. Dad. Yes, thank you, Father. <laughs> Congratulations to both of you. When I finally spoke to Mao again, it was the day of our high school graduation. I heard from our homeroom teacher that Mao was going to college in some far-off city. It was a college where he could really pursue his study of botany. I didn't want to leave things as they were. After the ceremony, I searched the school and found Mao by the school garden. It had been so long since I saw him up close, and he was a lot taller than I remembered. His long, slender fingers were black with earth, and his hands looked weathered. The strap of his canvas shoulder bag had been loosened to its maximum to let his bag fall to his hips. Somehow, that was enough to make my heart race. All I had to do was talk like we used to, but my mind suddenly went blank. What did I sound like when we used to talk? Was my voice high? Low? How did I choose my words? Was I curt with him? Cute? What was my timing when I smiled or got angry? I had no idea what to say. The graduates and students were laughing and crying together. They called out to each other. Their incessant flow of words echoed through the school halls and reverberated around us. We'll always be friends. Take care. Good luck. Goodbye. Come back to visit. I listened closely to borrow some of their words, but none of them were what I wanted to say. Mal, come down here. That was all I could finally manage to say. After a quick look of confusion, 
Mal kneeled before me, eyes on mine. There was that familiar scent, the smell of damp earth. Mal always smelled of earth. Long ago, I used to love napping beside him as he read. It felt like I was lying in the middle of a grassy field. I finally felt like I was with my old Mal and was able to speak naturally. How's your research for the lantern blossoms going? Actually, my college has fully equipped labs, so I think I'll finally be able to make some sort of progress. Genetic engineering is still a tricky field, so I probably won't be successful right away. I have a million and one things I want to test out, so I highly doubt that four years will be enough time. Once given the chance, Mal's eyes glistened and he rattled on like the old days. His voice was lower than I remembered. He was intense and full of confidence, but there was still a bit of that old, delicate Mal in him, too. My heart was filled with so many feelings. I thought I'd burst into tears. I hadn't even cried during the ceremony. How had I survived being apart from Mao all these years? How could I stand not hearing him? How could I breathe without taking in his scent? Why hadn't I tried to patch things up sooner? And now... Mao was going far away. I would never be able to follow him with my legs. Mao was like a towering tree beside me. He offered me cozy shade, quenched my thirst with dew, gave me fresh oxygen to breathe. He was a gentle, peaceful tree. Mao We'll always be friends, right? Yeah. Take care where you're going. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Goodbye. And come and visit me sometime. Yeah. I'm still studying photography. And I've even landed some gigs. I clicked the shutter, blown away by the force and breath and energy of the athletes. As a hobby, I've begun shooting trees and flowers, too. Whenever I capture the workings of life that flowers give off so powerfully, and yet can be so easy to miss if you're not careful, I swear I can smell Mal beside me. Though the year of his graduation came, Mao did not. Rumor had it, he was staying late at the lab. He was so preoccupied, he'd probably forgotten all about me. I knew deep down in my heart, he never had any intention of keeping his promise to see me again. By that point, he and I had already started to make our way down our own separate paths. I had left my tree called Mao and was already breathing on my own. I'd come to the realization that our dreams no longer fit on a one-page drawing the way they used to. Where did you come from? Where are you going? I'm sure you come from some place I don't know. Going someplace I can't follow. If during your journey you happen to encounter a lantern blossom, I want you to take a moment, stop, and think about the botanist who created it. I'm sure it will have been a young man named Mal. I believe that someday, he'll become the most amazing botanist ever. Oops, it's already recording. Okay, um... I'm on my way out to say goodbye to this world. I might not make it very far, but even if I only make it one step, so long as time permits me, I want to see this world with my own two eyes. I want to leave proof here that I existed in the world. So, if there's any...
anybody listening to this, please remember me. Remember that I was alive. Dang, that was pretty gloomy. I should have left it on a more positive note. Ugh, I'm almost out of time. If we worked without ambition, spent our days with time on our tails, never thought we were happy, and will now disappear without leaving any memory, then what, just what, was the point of us? see it anywhere. Hmm. It looks like only the star is missing. Hey, what's that? Huh? Oh, it looks like a flashlight. weird. It makes everything green. Hey now, I think you just hit the jackpot. That flashlight reveals things you can't typically see. Huh? How's it do that? Well, it's because... Actually, it's a hassle to explain. Oh, don't give me that look. Just be happy you can see stuff, okay? If you think I'm gonna explain every little thing, think again. I'm no teacher. Huh? But... Okay.
I found it. This must be the star she wanted. What's she want this for anyway? I just don't get what's going on in that little girl's head. And for being so young, she sure is acting like an old hag if you ask me. I thought all girls liked shiny things. Well, they don't do it for me. Rather than having some things, it's more important to have somebody. <clears throat> what are you staring at? We got the start. Now let's head back. I brought you the star. See? Liar. You couldn't get it. It's too high up to reach. There's... You're wrong. I was with him when he got it. Yeah. It wasn't at the top of the tree. You stubborn little brat. Believe what people say for once. You're so rude. What else... What else can I do to win your trust? Hmm... The moon. Can you bring me the moon? What? Now you want the moon? Fine. One moon coming right up. Good. I've seen it in the park lots of times. This is the moon she wanted. Yeah, but look at it. It's cemented to this sign. There's no way we can get it off. But we finally found it. There's no point trying to pull it off. I did it. It came right off. must have been rotten. Well, good for you. So, this is the moon, right? No, you're a liar. There's no way you could have gotten it off. It was cemented to a wall. Yeah, well, the wall gave away easily. I didn't think it would work at first, either. I barely had to touch it for it to come right off. I don't believe you. Oh, come on. What do I have to do for you to believe me? Oh, please. Don't even waste your breath. She won't believe you no matter what you do. Well... My ring... Could you get back the ring I lost? She'll just pull this all over again. Let's forget about it. Uh, what? You want me to find it? Um... Uh-huh. What's it look like? Well, it's silver and heart-shaped. Do you remember where you last saw it? Um... I'm not sure. I... I think it was in the hotel restaurant. Okay, I'll be back. Oh, okay. A silver ring, huh? I've got a feeling this is gonna be the toughest hunt yet. Weird. What an 
understatement. <sighs> I wish weird was all it was. That thing's evil to the core. Evil? Watch out! It spotted us! that took care of it. I gotta say, for being such a pretty boy, you're kind of tough. <laughs> I guess being on my own has made me that way. Hey, what's that? It's glowing. What is it? Is it her silver ring? Let's go back and see what she says. Then again, she'll probably just call you a liar. Here, we found your ring. Why did you believe what I told you? Why not? I didn't think you'd lie to me. But why? Because I wanted to trust you. Um, does that sound weird? Hmm, it is a little strange, but it's not a bad thing. You wanted to believe me? That sounds like something he'd say. My name is Chio. Please, come in. Thanks. found my ring for me. That was so sweet of you. Who's that? That there's the girl. Mm, actually, that's not quite right. We're seeing her true physical form. Thank you. Oh. Thank you so much. The day will come when your journey will end as well. Your greatest adventure will be over, and you will make your way home. However, your journey will not be complete. The days will still go on for you. One after another they will pass, until you've had enough of the monotony. No new discoveries will await you. You'll watch the sun rise and set. That's all your days will have to offer. That's the moment when you'll realize the truth. 
the sunbeams, the wind rolling over tall grass, the idle chit-chat with friends. These were the gems of your life. Then your heart will be carried off by the gentle, caressing breeze, and it will sparkle like a jewel, fade, and grow cold. Seeing this ring again, it brings back such a flood of memories for me. I see his smiling face that I loved so much. I see his fingers, long and rough yet beautiful at the same time. Oh, how I missed this ring. I missed it so much. And yes, I know, I don't have much time left. But for you, I'm sure there are many tomorrows still waiting. So, you must go on your way. You must live. Live. Live your life. Until you breathe your last breath. Live life to the fullest. That... Over there... What is it? Something on the nightstand? This brooch was fashioned after my hair clips. I don't have anything of practical use to give. But I do hope you'll take this along with you. Mm. It's beautiful. Of course I'll take it. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear for returning my ring to me. And also thank you for believing what I told you. Thank you, from the bottom of my heart. Let's go, there's nothing we can do. We can't leave her like this. There is no saving her anymore. Besides, you have to go out and meet your own tomorrows. Don't you remember? In the eyes of an old man lives a rascal of a boy. Behind sunken, mistrusting eyes lies a frightened little girl. During the many years of life, we feel anger, bitterness, and fear. And yet, even when betrayed, part of us wants to trust again. Just as we believe in ourselves, we want to believe in others. No matter who takes the first step, I will believe in them. And I believe that they will make the choice to believe in me too.